Good morning, church. Amen. Good morning, church. Amen. Thank you. We, we thank you, Dr. H, for welcoming us from the conference. Um, it's good to be at Solusi. It's always like coming back home. Whenever you enter the gate, you are coming back home. So we enjoy coming back to Solusi. For whatever program that we are coming for, we are always coming back home. I stand before you to unpack the program that we are going to have uh, this morning and uh, also in the uh, afternoon. We are coming from South Zimbabwe Conference and uh, we are not new, let me say almost to everyone. <coughs> we are part of you. But the reason why I'm standing here I just want to clear the issue of um, the table. The team that I travel with, they know when I, when I speak about the table, I want to clear the air when I speak about the table. There is this man who was sent by his church for a very important and big meeting um, where they paid for the air ticket and he had to fly, they booked a hotel for him. He was a delegate. And they expected him to bring the report. But what happened when he went for the meetings, when he got there, he got to, into the boardroom. I've seen a boardroom here. There is, there is a boardroom here at Exley Hall. So this man went inside for the meetings. And he saw a very big table, very big. Like the one that is in that, in that boardroom there. So this man, when the meetings were on, he looked at all the doors. And indeed, there was not even one door that was as big as those ones there. I think, yeah, the biggest was like this door here. So he looked at the table and he looked at the door and he shook his head. And he said, how on earth did these people manage to get this table in here through that small door? So when the meetings were on, this is what was ringing in his mind until the meetings came to an end. And when he went back home, they asked him to give a report. He had nothing to say because of the table. So it's very possible that maybe we could be having somebody with that problem here. That when these meetings are ongoing, somebody may be asking, but where did these people come from? What exactly are they going to say? Let me clear that one from our heads. So our meetings here, they are very simple. We have done these meetings before, but there is just a component, one small component that we are adding into these meetings. Because you would remember that um, we are coming to the end of the triennium this year. We started in 2021, 2022, and now we are in 2023. What did we do in the past two years? 2021, we launched the conference mission, vision, goals, and everything. We also did the same in 2022. And now this is our final year. We cannot launch again. So what we are going to do, we are going to remind each other of the mission, goals, rather the mission, the vision, the goals and the values of the conference that we had set in the three years that started in 2021, ending in 2023. So, what we are going to do, our executive secretary, Pastor Ndlovu, will, talk, will take us through the, the mission of the South Zimbabwe Conference and uh, the vision of South Zimbabwe Conference. And then after that, our sister, Mrs. Masugu, will uh, take us through the values, seven values of the conference, Soon after her, Pastor Moyo will uh, remind us of the seven goals of the conference and possibly where he will, 
he will give us the achievements that have taken place in the conference. And then after Pastor Moyo, I will now come in with the, the review, the progress review. Now we are narrowing and zeroing uh, uh, at Solusi University District to check what have we done as Solusi University District. Then from there, our executive secretary will now, will now come again and uh, give us a charge and the closing remarks of the morning session. We now hand over to Pastor Njofu, our executive secretary, to take us through the mission and the vision of the South Zimbabwe Conference, and then followed by Mrs. Masugu, then Pastor Moyo, and then the rest of the other uh, details of the programs. Thank you so much. Good morning, saints. Are you here? Are you happy to be in God's church on his day? All those who are happy say hallelujah. Yes, thank you so very much. We want to thank God for bringing us here. I, um, I think I first lived here in 1983 when Pastor Timoyo and myself were teaching at the primary school here. Um, that is long before some of you were born. Uh, I can see some people smiling, and I know why. And um, my dear friend, who is my son-in-law, brother-in-law, uh, Chinguri, is he here? He's not here. He was one of our students there. Uh, in grade six or grade seven, I can't remember. Since this is not the launch, it is a progress review program. That means the launch was done in 2021, and the church that is before me has been working, focusing on that which was launched. And when I talk about the mission statement and the vision, I am not talking of a new thing, but it's a reminder of those things which you already know. Am I right? Yes or no? Yes or no? I can hear some yeses. That means we have a direction. If we are not uh, in a position to know our mission statement by this time. When we are concluding our triennium, that means we have lost it. And uh, that would be a disaster for each one of us. I, be, I believe that, especially here, that we are in an institution, we have a mission statement, and it is a responsibility of everyone connected with that institution or organization to know the mission statement. Not only to know, but to rally behind it and to push every activity toward that mission statement. This gives us uh, the purpose. This gives us the direction. It helps us to know who we are, where we are going, and what we want to achieve. Failure to capture that, we will achieve everything and anything but what we ought to be achieving. I, rem I remember at one point in time, I went to one of our institutions where I was employed there as a chaplain. When I got to that institution, I asked for my job description. And my HOD said, we don't have one, please craft yours. I refused. Come year end, the board met, and the chaplain was supposed to give his report, which I did. I did give my report because there were activities that had been done during the year, 
and uh, the board chairman said, this is excellent. I looked at him, I said, I am not amused. I was young then, you know what young people can do. I said, Mr. Chairman, with all due respect, I'm not amused at your comment. He got surprised, he says, but why? This is an excellent report. I said, fine, the report has been given, but when you say excellent, against what measure are you assessing it? What did I achieve that you are saying excellent too? You gave me no objectives, no goal, nothing at the beginning, and at the end you say excellent because I achieved anything. Where I am going is, we need to know what we want to achieve at the end of the day. We need to know something that defines us. Who are we? Where are we going? What do we want to achieve at the end of the day? We as Seventh-day Adventists, we need to know who we are. But within that big organization called the Seventh-day Adventists, there happens to be an institution called South Zimbabwe Conference. South Zimbabwe Conference has a mission statement, and this mission statement is not divorced from the bigger picture of the bigger organization, which is the Seventh-day Adventists. And whatever mission statement we have speaks to the bigger picture of the Seventh-day Adventist Church globally. Therefore, it means that as Solusi University District, we need also to rally behind the mission statement for South Zimbabwe Conference as we are part of the South Zimbabwe Conference. The purpose of South Zimbabwe Conference, which we are part of, is to call all people. As we look at this mission statement, I would love us to focus on three terms that are used there. And after I talk about them, I'll go to the vision, then sit down. Because this is not a launch, I'll just go very fast. It's just a reminder to remind us of our mission statement so that whatever activities we are doing this year as we run towards the end of our triennium, we are running with this in focus, knowing what purpose we are up to. The mission statement says the purpose of South Zimbabwe Conference is to call. I want to focus on that term call. And to call how many? All people. Our business, when we go out, our business as South Zimbabwe Conference Seventh-day Adventist Church is to call all people. To go out there and call, bring them Talk to them, bring them to call all people. And this calling is not leaving anyone out. As our mission is, as the Great Commission has been given to us as a church in Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. When you look at verse 19, it talks about the inclusiveness of this gospel that we have been given. It focuses on how many people? All. And my little English, I'm not a, an English major, my little English tells me that all is not many. 
English majors, can you help me? Is all the same as many? All leaves nothing out. In other words, if we would look at races, we are saying this gospel that God has given to us, this gospel or this uh, mission or this call is calling us or is giving us an instruction to include all races, be it black, white, yellow, whatever, all races are included. All tribes are included, am I right? Hence, when we look at the Adventist church, it doesn't leave out any tribe. I know that these are very clear issues to us. But I want to go a little further to say, I hear and understand all to be meaning also different people groups. And diff different people groups include tribes, it includes color, it includes educational backgrounds, it includes economic backgrounds, and so on. There are some people who might be your tribe, who might be your color, but are not economically at your level, or they are economically different from you. This gospel, or this call, is sending us to all those people. And when we look at that, it's interesting for us to, it's interesting that we, we, we might look at one or two other things or look at a broader picture. I want us to zero especially at our own territory. What people groups do we have here at Solusi University District? Being an institution of higher education, I want to submit that uh, to you that this, your territory does not just end with the geographical, uh, geographical boundaries. It extends beyond that. You have, as an institution, you have as an, a university, a territory that is beyond your ge geographical uh, map. And that is your contacts, which might be even outside the borders of this country. You are part of the call. To call all people, and those that includes those people. So that's what we are out to do, to call all people without uh, leaving anyone uh, outside the scope. And then another term that I would like us to focus on, after calling all people to become disciples of, uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are there to proclaim, to proclaim. The calling, we might use different platforms to call all, all those people. We may use witnessing, we may use WhatsApp, we may use uh, the mass media in its different forms. But we are also, the other responsibility that is ours as South Zimbabwe Conference in our mission statement says to proclaim. At one place, there's somebody who asked a question saying, don't you think the tent thing, the preaching thing uh, to masses is uh, overtaken by events? Why don't we use the, um, the almost one-to-one, -one, one to one approach and forget about pitching tents and so on. We have a responsibility to proclaim, to preach. And we cannot just, gather, we cannot just pick one method and run with it. We have a basket full of methods and those methods need 
to be used. And proclamation is one method that we want to promote and encourage that we need to do, to proclaim the everlasting gospel. The everlasting gospel is, is shown or given us in Revelation chapter 14, 6 to 12. That's the three angels' message that makes us a distinct movement. And the third one is to prepare. We call all people, we proclaim this gospel, and in our proclamation and the calling, we are not just doing it for the sake of being one of those organizations that uh, are on the map, but we are just doing it to prepare a people to meet their God. We are doing all this not to, to make good citizens of this world as an end, but to prepare people for the kingdom of God. Our business is to prepare a people to meet their God. At the end of it all, after doing all these beautiful programs, the end should be those people should be ready to meet their God. Those people should be ready to be citizens of the kingdom of heaven. So this is just to remind us that we are here as Seventh-day Adventist Church, South Zimbabwe Conference, to call all people, black and white, green and yellow, whatever color, whatever tribe, whatever status in life, whoever they are, to call all of them and proclaim this everlasting gospel, the three angels' message, so that all of them are ready to be citizens of the kingdom of God. And then we move on to the vision. A spirit-led, soul-winning, nurturing, and faithful membership. Let me take uh, these points one by one. As an organization, as a church, as an institution, we are saying we want to prepare a people, we want to prepare a membership, we want uh, to have all our people being spirit-led. Take note, not spirits laid, led, not led by the spirits, plural, but led by the spirit. Which spirit? Which spirit? The Holy Spirit, yes, the Holy Spirit. By the way, as I said, that's where I started as a teacher. I, uh, I really feel good when I get a response. Um, I hope you, you, you are not offended. You are at a, at a school situation, you understand that. Spirit-led. These days, there are people who are out to get names. And when you have a name, you feel good. And having the name, you want to, to, to rally all the people around you because of that thing, that particular thing that makes you have that name. But we are saying, as a church, we are not out there to make a name for ourselves. We are not out there to be led by the desire for popularity. We are not led, we are, we are not here to, be, to go out and get a name because uh, something that is in us, something that we think uh, we possess makes us uh, popular. We are not there because of logic, just logic or public opinion or human theories, but we are, said, we, we are saying we want to be a spirit-led church and develop and grow and groom spirit-led membership. Those members that will look at their lives and consider themselves Christians, Adventist Christians, who subscribe to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. So 
the Holy Spirit becomes an integral part of their lives because they understand that they are led by the Holy Spirit. By the way, when you go to Acts chapter 1, uh, reading from the first verse going down, you will find that Jesus talks about the Holy Spirit that he will send. And that Holy Spirit, Spirit was to do greater things in the membership or in the church membership that Jesus had left behind. So we are saying being led by the Spirit is one of uh, a, our focus as a church. In our vision, we are saying the membership should be Spirit-led. Logic has its place. Public opinion has its place. Human theories have their place. But as a membership, as a church membership, we are saying we want our membership to be led by the Spirit. The word of the Lord, which was written by men and women of God, led by the Spirit of God, should be our guide. And the Spirit should be leading. Leading to what? To soul winning. Matthew chapter 28 verses 18 to 20 gives us the Great Commission and I want to couple it with Acts chapter 1 verse 8. We exist to bear children in God. When you got baptized, you were baptized not just to be a member but to be a disciple and a disciple disciples others and produces more children in God, in faith. More children into God's kingdom. This is our business, this is our calling. Soul winning is why we are here. And soul winning does not just go on its own, it goes with nurturing. When we win them, we are not just to win them and dump them, but we are to win them and do it. And keep them, nurture them, Groom them. See that they grow in Christ. Let it not be uh, something that is a by the way, but it's something that we need to take note of. When we make our plans for soul winning, when we make our plans to go out and bring souls into God's church, let's also think about ways of nurturing them, keeping them. Uh, this Nurturing is tied to soul winning. These are twins. Keep watch on what you reap. Don't just reap to throw away or disregard. When you win them, they have different priorities. They have different worldviews which need to be shaped and corrected or redirected so that the worldview that this person had before they came into the church, they accepted Christ, they accepted Adventism, is nurtured and shown and redirected so that it is a worldview that is in the right direction. So nurturing is a very integral part of our business. Guide them uh, into what they need to be. Um, and finally, faithful membership. Faithfulness is another very critical component of our vision. Our assurance of our citizenship in God's kingdom is or has to do with being faithful. Are you still with me? Not just being faithful only, but remaining faithful. Being faithful is a good start but we still have a journey to go, remain faithful to the end. So this is our vision as South Zimbabwe Conference and the mission statement, may God help us so that we keep this in focus, whatever activities that we plan, whatever programs that we have, they don't deviate from our mission statement, they don't deviate from our vision. If we keep that in focus, we will definitely hit the call. May God bless us. This is my prayer in his name. Amen.